about your work. You're pretty cocksure for a child. You would be too if you had miracle legs. Miracle legs? They seem pretty normal to me, girl. Looks can be deceiving. Have you heard of the great Phidippides, the mighty hero of old? Ran all the way from Marathon to tell the king they won the battle. Then guess what happened? He only fell down dead. Dead? From running? It was very far. Girls can't fight. It's the rules. But like Phidippides, I'm going to be the fastest messenger who ever lived. So when the Norse defeat the Saxon armies, you'll quickly bear the bad news to your king. Them sissy britches. Fat chance. So do you want to race or not? I've beaten everyone else in the whole world. In that case, let's run. You're fast, I grant you. But you will not outrun me. Let's see these miracle legs of yours. No other Saxon has been able to keep me on my toes like you, little one. I never thought I would be beaten, but you run like the wind. I'm glad I had a real challenge. And I'm glad to have given you one. Do you like interesting places? I've run all over Wessex, found some scary, spooky magic spots. <sighs> Exploring such is what I live for. I'll give you my diary. I call it the many wondrous runnings of the galloping miracle legs. Bye-bye. find the man in white in their guard's house.
Show me what lies ahead. This must be the house of that timid guard. They built him a rich dwelling. The Lord takes the best of us to save us. Let's see you, old friend. You see, Sunan.
illuminate my true path. You have not left the church in days. What troubles you? God will speak to me. I know it. He will show me my true path. You God's have light will show him his path. Maybe I can illuminate the lectern somehow to seize his brethren. Hours. God is giving me a sign. If only I could see it. See his light. A sign? God in heaven, give him a sign. Set him on his true path, far away from me. Yes, illuminate me, oh Lord, illuminate me. Dane treads the cobbles of God's house. In search of Christ's redemption, I hope. Your Christ can wait his turn. It is you I've come to see. Is that so? When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. You know these words, and you know why I speak them. I do. But I am not yet satisfied that you are the one for the task ahead. As Jesus said unto Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Speak the deeds of Christ in order. Only then will you cometh unto my Lord. If I must dance to your tune, tell me where to step. In books, one may find such wisdom. We had many in England, before the Danes burned our churches. A few yet remain nearby. Or perhaps a more pious soul in need of charity will reward you with a lesson. I have nothing for you now, but I will return. He was a man of surpassing vigor, well versed in the Bible. gentle wash brings them closer to their god. He rose from the dead. A nice trick, and not easily done.
Their God brings them light, just as Balto does. Light as bright as the summer sun. Speak the deeds of Christ in order. God breathed on the water, and in the Jordan River, he was cleansed of all sin. His baptism. On the mountain, his face shone like the sun, and he became light. His transfiguration. The women came with offerings, but they could not find him when they looked among the dead. His resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Well spoken. Are the riddles done? That is not for me to decide, for I am not the one who summoned you. If you follow, I will lead you to him. I solved your riddle. Now all I get is silence. Who am I to meet? Shh. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. Yet men become wise by speaking with other men. They grow foolish when keeping to silence. Hush! Your prattling offends God's ears. We're here! May Christ, whose terror scares away the foul throngs, make with me a strong covenant. Was God's lesson instructive? I learned that your God fears death, just as mine do, just as every man does. Yet through our Lord, we may achieve life everlasting in his glorious presence. Perhaps you missed that detail. Do all the priests in Winchester have this same skill for drama? You risk your life, Alfred King. I have invited you here to speak on equal terms. Do the Dane laws of hospitality not apply in Wessex? You gifted my Jarl to that wealth from the Order of Ancients, the warrior Fulke. Fulke was an enemy of Wessex. But it seems someone has already removed her threat from my lands. If you did not hear it was me, you have now. Impressive. The Order of Ancients has surely been crippled by her loss. How much do you know of this Order? Only this and little more. This letter, signed by one who calls himself a poor fellow soldier of Christ, warns of a plot against my life. The Gallows, the Quill, the Sikhs. Three men eager to kill you. Two now. The Bishop Aelferth is dead. He was the Sikhs, so far as I can tell. 
and a humble servant of your guard. That must sting. Still, his death has strengthened Christian fellowship in Winchester. I pray the deaths of his colleagues will do the same. You have faced warriors like me many times before, and many times you have lost or been cheated. Why trust me now? I have men in London and Jorvik. Men who send me reports on the rise and fall of the tides of war. Not long ago, men and women of some influence were murdered in those places. In oddly specific circumstances. When I received this letter from our poor fellow soldier, it did not take long to work out why. I don't know your motive, nor what you hope to gain. All I ask is that you finish the work you have begun, before these fallen souls infest England further. I should let the Order kill you. It would speed our conquest of England. You may remove the organs of state. The cancer will remain. Then promise me a reward I can sing about, a healthy king's weight in silver. Very well. As much as you can carry. This morning, my Reeve, Goodwin, was not at his post. A man you trust. Goodwin was following the clues given in this letter when he disappeared. Where was he last seen? At his house, by the West Gate. You may find something there. Eivor, compose yourself while you are my guest. My city is not a battlefield. Not yet, great king, but the day will come. I need to find this Reeve Goodwin. I see you, little mice. The quill has eyes everywhere. Winchester warns a good bishop and a strong, virile man. May he find his peace with God. You don't give me a hey, I want to talk to you. Anyway, is Alfred king or not? Will I need your eyes, my friend. Well, you ain't, that's for sure. So keep your mouth shut and do as you're told. Shut your mouth, yeah? Unless you want yours to rot off in the keep. Goodwin gone, and guards sniffing around. So where would they have taken him? Good night. God won't let us lose. Bleed. Beat.
Papers thrown in the fire. Goodwin covering his tracks. Other guards destroying evidence. Broken balls, food scattered. They took him by force. There must be a garrison in the city. A violent struggle with the guards. They must have taken him to Winchester's garrison. with Alfred, educating the people of Winchester. Have a look, Sunin. Is this what you want, you filthy swindler? A pond full of piss? Do you see? A 
should not be seen in this area.
What's going on? Soon in. Guide me.
other side. Thick walls and thicker guards, a place to keep a valuable man.
Lord Dane in Winchester. These are strange times. King Alfred sent me, pleading from his bended knee to find someone. I know Alfred well enough to spot a bloody lie when I hear it. If he did send you, he was standing tall and proud. That he was, and you are the man I've come to find, Goodwin. Do you know why? If I had one guess, to find these heretics from the Order of Ancients, and bury them so deep, even God would need a shovel. So where do we start digging? My research should help us. If they haven't burned it already, it'll be somewhere nearby. I will find your research. Now go before they find their wolf has fled his cage. Let's regroup beyond the walls! Selwyn ordered executions for petty theft and mudslinging. A husband and wife to be carried out soon. Goodwin's research against the Order of Ancients. <laughs> Cast about this land, my friend.
young King Alfred. He'll crack his head like a fresh hen's egg. Ah! Come on, Esselbert. It's yours for the taking. Do it! You see if I don't! I'm just screwing my courage to the sticky place! What are you doing all the way up here? Don't try and stop me! I will get that flower, and then she'll see how much I love her! A brave choice, little fellow. Even if I get smashed on the ground like an... an overripe plum, I'm just getting my breath back. The climb was hard. I'm... Girding my, uh, uh, loins. Lions, eh? Well, I could get it for you. I would hate to see such a ferocious flame snuffed out. I mean, if you insist. But I could get it if I wanted to. Just so you know. <laughs> he missed! This danger missed! That could have been Esselbert's mangled noggin. What a terrible show! Mangled noggin. What a terrible show!
I'd known it was that easy. You would have done it yourself. Risked life and limb. But great men know the value of a champion. What will you do with such a treasure? It's for her. It's all for her. So she'll finally notice me. Athelflaed, what do you say to the sweet boy? Thank you for the flower. It is very beautiful. Now we are betrothed, and I will grow up to be a great king. And you will be my fair lady. What say you, daughter? Do you think him a worthy suitor? He risked so much to declare his love. I will tell my husband the king you claim our daughter's hand. When you are a little older, of course. Come, dearest. Holy cow! You actually gave a flower to the princess! And now we are betrothed! It takes more than that. There's holding hands and grunting, and then sometimes praying. Oh God! Oh God! the first. Leah Winchester! Stretch your wings, Sunan. <gasps> I am grateful for your help. It is a brazen move to arrest Alfred's favorite reeve. This so-called order are nothing but deviled shit peddlers. Shit peddlers who have wormed their way into every crevasse of your country. They are dangerous. I didn't catch your name, did I? Eivor of the Raven Clan. Scourge of Mercia, if that name does not rattle some recognition. Well, Eivor, when our three heretics smolder on a heap of ash, we'll down a cup of ale together and share our distaste of Mercians like old friends. Alfred believes at least one is dead. Your bishop, Aelfirth, was the sixth. Bugger. Half of Winchester is in mourning for that nun groper. I found this nailed on a door. The quill wheels words like a knife. A disputation of tutelage. Pretty chatter with poisoned intent. I will look into this more. The gallows. What do you know of him? Must be another reeve, I'm sure of it. Only we have the power to mete out justice. And this one would walk with cocksure righteousness. The gallows had you arrested, so he must command the law. Reeve Selwyn? Of course. That hedge pig has brought down laws like a hammer on Winchester, executing sinners on spurious charges in the square. Could it be another? He's the man. He's the only one who fits. End his terror, Eivor. The Lord works in mysterious ways. 
taking his servant in so terrible a fire. Bishop Aylforth was no man of God. Hush, someone has hanged men for better thoughts. Winchester, open your eyes. See how Alfred's lofty ideals are weighed down in this mire of human effluence. These prisoners before you do not live by Alfred's laws. They live above them. They wallow in shit, only guided by their own perversity. Hubert here, his wits addled by ale, spoke false of Bishop Aylfer. Our pious servant of Winchester, who even now lies cold in his grave shroud. Aelfoth was no man of God. He'll burn for his sins. <laughs> Your wife is obeying shrew, Hubert. Is there a man here who has not supped rancid mead from her cup? When will your work be done, Selwyn? When all of Winchester falls to your justice? Winchester has passed judgment, Hubert. May God have mercy on your cankerous soul. <laughs> There are rats in the grain store. Alfred has set the traps. You cannot steal and be welcome at our hearts. You cannot slander and keep your tongue. You cannot walk freely through our streets, mocking our laws, our king's edicts. And so I ask, who has the right to determine the fate of the perverse if not the goodly people of Winchester? I am but your humble servant.
perverter of justice. Who dares execute the king's noose? It is not in Alfred's name that you carry out your work. You are the Order's executioner. <laughs> you peer through the veil, but you do not see clearly. Alfred's laws are a slave's fever dream. He offers shit-soaked beggars a seat at his table, where the meek devour the strong. Who best to judge the fate of the wretched many, if not the strong and worthy few? To protect your people, you must sheathe your hand in an iron glove. You grind your heels into the backs of freedmen, not those who deserve it. The Order condemns all men to pain. For all men are but a shadow of the perfection we should know. The perfection of the Ancient Ones. You are only a man, Reed. One dead branch on a fast-dying tree. <laughs> dries up the bones. Does Magister Batter not teach you the scriptures? Magister Batter is a horse's dangles. And here is the axe I used to swat a fly. You have ventured from your burrow. And you have plunged my city into chaos. I had hoped you would use the lessons of your subtler gods. We have no subtle gods. If the gallows is truly dead, perhaps we can allow cautious revelry? I did only what I agreed to, Alfred. If your crown now weighs heavy, I would gladly take it from you. <sighs> Forgive my outburst. God sowed in me a passion, but English prose is an instrument long out of tune. We all want better for our people, don't we, Eivor? Yours and ours. The quill remains. What do we know? The decay of learning has been gentle in Wessex. We enjoy the office of wise men, but we have neglected the study of wisdom. The quill preys on this lapse. Did you discover more from the writings I found? I did. The Quill is calling the children of Winchester to arms. Now we know why so many children scurry through the streets. Feral and untutored. I can talk to some. See where they lead me. Good. Find me at the alehouse when you're done. And try not to scare the piss from any of them. We Norse are the monsters of your Saxon mother's bedtime tales. I promise nothing.
I see you, child. Come. The bad Reef, Selwyn. I saw you punish him in the square. He hurt many people. Yes. He hurt my mother to death. Then took her good luck charm. Perhaps you found it? A little carved tree. It is all I have to remember her by. Such a sad story. Take this. Perhaps it will keep you off the streets and out of trouble. For me? Oh, thank you. Spry, little mouse. Will you lead me to your quill? Heaven will swallow the smoke of Aelfa's pyre. Very poetic. But he's going to be do you believe in souls? A part of us that lives on with God after we die. Get off me, you oath! Stop struggling and. Zunin, guide me. Give back that apple. Apple? I didn't scribble nothing! Give the hands. <laughs> Stealing apples, eh? Fruit don't feed a grown boy. Do you have any chicken? I do not. But maybe you can tell me what you know of the quill. The quill? God blimey, you're brave. Find Elwyn and Wigbert. They see everything. God's beard! You set Winchester ablaze! Roly poly mutton man, you can't catch me! Oh, God help me. I'd rather be shoveling dung in Malvern again. Calcia menta mihi mundus es satis raros sedate, sint piorum ambulare in atris domus dei, et ingens. Survey the area, Sunan. You again? You should mind your own beeswax. Elwyn, is it? You wield fire like the flaming Jotna. Days like this, things just go whoosh. Well, oi, Wigbert, you great moon calf. Hand it over, Alwyn. We saw your little shadow take it. What are you looking at? How about I pay you to scuttle off to the tavern and drink yourself senseless? Dale! Better than running round after you, grubby urchins. Ha! <laughs> that showed them! Trouble seems to follow you. And I wriggle out of it like a slippery eel. Why are you following me? I'm looking for the quill, so I'm asking you, his little worker bees. Us? Working for the quill? Shows what you know. Is that so? They were the quill's ninny pops. Smart stuff to throw coin at them. They'll be too swift to bother you now. It sounds like you owe me your life. This one's brave and strong. Might be able to help us. So you are not working for the quill? We steal to stay alive and out of the quill's clutches. But you know where I can find him. They 
come up from the sewers like rats. Go on, give him what you took. Maybe he can save us. Good luck, Dane. Try not to get maimed and all that. See you, old friend. <gasps> I should watch out for a mousetrap. Today. I like the pretty things, but Magic I'm going to marry King Alfred, wrong. and he's going to whisk me away from all this toil. Everyone died and left me alone on the streets. Ah! Never enough food. I'm always starving. Thank you. 
Where's she? Now, now, Elwyn. Few have the wit that you and I possess. Most see the world in simpler terms, where we are the weaker sex. A brood mare who preys on innocence, and you brag about strength. How little you know. Defend your mistress! Elfrith's roof. Does she flee to the bishop's house?
and mother will give you a treat. Coward, using children to spy and steal for your order. To educate them. Give me a child until you're seven, and I will give you the man. Or woman. What use are letters when a child can only write his name in pig shit? Or wisdom in a woman when she cannot wield it beyond her heart? <laughs> I taught little Alwyn so much more. Saved her from a life less worthy. She will find enlightenment in the Order, just as I did. If I could save them all, I would. But you cannot. You have corrupted too many to save too few. is the only way forward. It can quench our thirst for knowledge. If only Alfred's slave faith is defeated. And what would you sacrifice for infinite knowledge? An immeasurable gift. Why refuse it? Not their innocence. A pity. Non requiescat in pace. Set to meet him at an alehouse nearby.
Eivor! Is this where Justice hides when she's tired? Hides? Splood, no. This is a wake, my friend. A celebration to ease the quill on her way to eternal damnation. You heard. Hilda's were not the only eyes in Winchester. My spies tell me stories of an avenging angel striking down the unworthy. I've been called worse. Be thou hail, Eldorbana. That's life destroyer in our dialect. I sat easy with my kinsbane, old honey waves alive in my horn, and my eyes on the door, expecting my death, yet unafraid. <laughs> You're quite safe with me, Dane. For now. If the mead is fresh and the air is cool, you may often find a friend even amongst your enemies. I could use someone like you in my settlement, with ink on his fingers and a sense of honor. I would love to devote myself to the study and practice of the law. There is a weariness in war I wish I could shake off. Impossible. Even in death our battles will rage on. It is the way of things. I must thank you before the ale dulls me. By cutting the order down to size, you have given England a hope of unity. It must be a sour apple to swallow, knowing that you are the last of Winchester's enemies. Are you sure the Sikhs is dead? The bishop is dead, that's certain. And if the bishop was the Sikhs, the Sikhs is dead. A transitive property of mortality, you see. I do not believe it. Too much theater in Winchester. Overwrought prayers and wailing women. Well, you could pay your respects and see for yourself. The funeral is today. If he rots, I will leave with my silver. But if he lives, there's work to be done. Watch your step, Avon. He'll be a hefty corpse in death. Alive, he'd be much bigger. Whether you find or make a corpse, meet me at the Witten with your report. to Wember. You do not mourn like they do. Wember is always here, helping the sleeping, singing to them, so they are not frightened before they meet God. The sleeping? You mean the dead? Wember helps the monks. Dig, dig, dig. You dig the graves. Did you bury Aelfirth? Have you seen Layoff? My poor friend. Poor Poor Layoff. Layoff? What happened to him? Sleeping. Sleeping like my dog when I hooked him too hard. Someone heard Layoff. Yes. Yes. And while he slept, they stole his face. Did you know Bishop Elva? No, but I plan to write an epic poem of his grisly demise. Oh, poor Aelfeth, scorched of face, all your woeful companions, bold, bionid, weeping. Weeping as you are... Uh... Sleeping. Oh, perfect, yes. Threadbare clothes. Did they belong to Wemba's friend? Lord grant my brother Aelfa 
eternal bliss, where joy you know endures Bishop for Elfer? all those beloved Belly. of God. But can you still smell the burned flesh? It's rife across the whole graveyard. Do you not see? I am in prayer. May we speak of your brother's death? Have you no shame? Leave me. I will leave you in peace, then. The face is burned, and his clothes do not seem to fit his frail body. It could be Wemba's friend. And this corpse's build is slight, frail. Goodwin said Aelfirth was a brute. This funeral is a shadow play. The order killed an innocent, burned his foot. What now? A pretty show you have laid on here. But I know the truth. You would dare speak to me? When my poor brother Aelfirth lies cold in his shroud? Your brother is the Sikhs, and no more dead than I am. Heresy. My brother was the Bishop of Winchester. When Goodwin got too close to the truth about your brother's place in the Order, you buried him. Or rather, you buried another in his place. The poor gravedigger's friend. Burning his face so no one would know. How did you... No, I... Your brother is not in that crypt. Tell me where he is before more lives are lost. I will not tell you any more. Guards! All right, all right, have your way. They won't do you any good. Guards! Get round the side. Why will you not leave me alone? Enough of this, cat and mouse. Where is your brother, the one they call the Sikhs? He is a ghost now. But he will make himself flesh once more at the Witten. And Alfred will be king no more. He means to kill Alfred. Regicide? No. The king will step aside and Aelfeth will lead us all, risen and resplendent as the Lord. You are a damned fool. Aid me, be my eyes.
the past, Anglo-Saxons prospered in both warfare and... The Sikhs must be hiding in the crowd, biding his time to strike at Elfland. The letter of their sermons from Latin to English. And how can we understand God's words if they are not spoken in our tongue? Aelferth is dead, and we mourn him. But the foul deeds of the unrighteous are sown among our holy deeds like cockles and tear in a field of wheat. Education, wisdom, enlightened thought. This will raise us above the sins of our fathers. These I will demand of the next Bishop of Winchester. And so we meet to discuss all worthy candidates and choose the man who will shepherd our flock. The king is mine! Sweet is the shepherd's pipe when he calls his lambs to slaughter. I was born to Christians in the northern wilds. My mother would cradle me beneath the stars and whisper, dove-like, God watches over you. Then your people came. And God fixed his stout eye as they slit her throat for a copper ring. No stars threw down their spears as barbarians smeared her blood through fields of broken wheat. God watched all. And I hated him. It may be Alfred's guard was testing you. A trial you failed. Alfred's God is weak. Yet he would chain us all in his service from our first breath to our death rattle. My order wishes to break these mind-forged manacles. I am the wolf in Lamb's wool. He takes on the role of a god himself. A worthy path to walk. A wolf is but a walking feast for ravens. One more gift for you, Dane. A deadly truth, if you can find it. With my death, the Order will not die. It will only transform into something far worse for all of us. Elfirth will not cheat Loki's dread daughter twice. I owe you my life. An irony not lost on me, Alfred. My king, we'll go by back streets to the Old Minster. Eivor may find us there when all has settled. You, Dane. My brother served God. He wrapped himself in a death cloak to murder your king. Shouldn't you rejoice at the death of a king? You are a heathen and a devil. We both have more questions than answers. But if you know this key, perhaps we can help one another. Where is its home? You treated me with kindness. But this damned order, their machinations killed my brother, so the rest may rot. Take this key to the ruins beneath the bishop's house. You may find answers there.
I need your eyes, my friend. Just about this lamp, my friend. If Aelfer's sister spoke true, I will find answers in the ruins. secrets. I will send this to Hytham. He may make some sense of it. side. Everything they did was to undermine Alfred. She lied to me. There's nothing here of the Order. I should see Alfred for my reward.
Spread your wings, Suna. Come forth, Eivor. Here is far enough. When wrongdoers came to devour my flesh, these enemies stumbled and fell. Have the laws of hospitality been thrown out, Alfred? I did exactly as we agreed. That you did. But do not mistake necessity for friendship. You are a man of your word, a man of God. Indeed. By his example, I live my life. Goodwin? Here is the only silver fit for one of your dragon boats. A reminder of Christ's sacrifice and our charity. This too I offer you. Live here among us in peace as a Christian, or die a pagan in a blood-soaked field. All you have to lose is life everlasting. And if I choose neither? He offers you hope, Eivor. A life of purpose, above and beyond this one. You'd be a fool to refuse. Your reign will end, King of the West Saxons. Raven wings will beat until your throne crumples to dust. You were wrong, Goodwin. This one is beyond saving. your chance, damn you! I did not want it. Turn to Hytham and Ranvi. They will want to know what happened there. Hey, my boy. Uh, hey, Eivor. Hello, Eivor. Ooh. It was not 
rubbish. I intended to use it. Please, calm down. Ranvi, what is this? Another dispute, I'm afraid, with Holger stirring the pot once again. Will you set in judgment? Judgments are the burden of a Jarl. This is Sigurd's duty now. He refuses to leave his quarters. Right now, you are the only noble fit for this. I don't know. It is not my place. Please. Only until Sigurd recovers his strength. All right. Once more. Gudrun, Holger, come forward. You will state your cases and I will hear you out and be as swift in my judgment as I am able. Gudrun, you may speak. I have been robbed, Eivor. My property defaced. Three days ago, I discovered some of my sail cloth missing. I scoured the settlement in search of it. Passing Holger's home, there I see it. Boldly displayed and worse, defaced, with scrawls and silly stories upon it. Lies and slander! Holger, quiet. You are well acquainted with the rules of this trial. Now, Gudrun, what did you do upon discovering your sailcloth? I confronted him, demanding silver. For sail with Holger's inky scratching cannot be sold or bartered, can it? I ask only that I be paid for the property that was taken from me, yet he refuses. So Holger took something that belonged to you and defaced it. Now you wish to be paid for the item. Do I understand? That is right. Holger, what say you in your defense? Short days ago, I found a pile of mildew-stained detritus beneath the docks and salvaged what I could. I wish to use it as a canvas, you see? As a conveyance for my latest works. The sailcloth was in such a state and so obscured from view. I assumed it was refuse, abandoned goods. I see. My motives were honest, Eivor. Would a thief be so brazen as to display the fruits of his crime? Hardly. Yet here she claims I have robbed and defaced her property, when all I took was rubbish left by to rot. <sighs> Nonsense. My only crime here is that I gave something ugly and decrepit a bold new life. I see. So you feel Gudrun disposed of something and now unreasonably seeks its return. Exactly. Yes. All right, I have heard enough. I might have profited from that cloth. Hulk has all but robbed me of a future boon. It was garbage. Yet now it's a part of something greater. If anything, I have increased its value. You ought to thank me. Oh, I will thank you with the back of my... Quiet. Let me speak. After careful thought, it is clear that... What is this? What are you doing? Holger and Gudrun are at odds. I hope to find a resolution. That duty is mine alone, Eivor. You know this. Stand aside. You were not here, brother. Nor did I wish to bother you. A sallow excuse for such a bold defiance. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you finished singing, my dear Skald? My Jarl, as I was saying, I Stop! Was... Enough! I have heard more than enough to render my judgment. For as long as I've known you, Holger, you have spun words into lies. You weaken the minds of children and delude the minds of men. I've shown you too many years of tolerance. And rather than exist in grateful meekness as Holger the liar, you sink lower. You become Holger the thief, robbing a woman of her livelihood, all in the name of your stupid stories. Sigurd, you all know that that is not the... This is the consequence of your actions. You will pay Gudrun the value of thirty sailcloths. Thirty times? Surely you jest. That would ruin me, Sigurd. Do I look like one to pay pranks, Holger? Pay the fee, or be exiled? Great, Jarl, if I may. I seek only compensation for a single sailcloth. The rest is... Thirty times! In silver! That is my judgment. Eivor, please! Does this not seem unfair? Sigurd. 
Sigurd, the punishment must fit the crime. Your judgment is cruel and unfair. Cruel and unfair? Oh, no. No, you have it backwards. I am the definition of what is fair and what is not. I am your Jarl, the source of all right and wrong, the lord of justice in this place. Without rank, without order, without a chain of command, life cannot endure! Chaos will reign! Do you understand? As my brother and my Jarl, I back you, Sigurd. But in the face of injustice, I cannot help but speak. <laughs> Have you never in your life known when to hold your tongue, Eivor? Nor defer to those wiser than yourself. My judgment stands. Thirty times the sailcloth's value. That is final. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us out. See to it that judgment is carried out exactly as I have said. Should the need arise again, do not fail to rouse me. <laughs> Darling. Sigurd, leave me be, if you wish it. I want to thank you for your judgment, Eivor, for stepping in when Sigurd would not, in spite of what happened. Poor man. I've never known him to be so angry and reckless. Is that a side you've seen? Rarely. There have been moments when he was distressed, worried, afraid. But nothing like this. Never, ever like this. Let us do our best for him as we take care of our own. We are his best hope for healing. If it is not too late. In the meantime, we press on. The Order in Winchester has been wiped out. But we are no longer welcome there. My contact was none other than King Alfred himself. The Order wanted him dead, so he fought back. Alfred? The line between friend and enemy is a porous one. I want to see the Alliance map. What awaits in Jorvikshire? Halfdan Ragnarsson, Conqueror of the North, sends his greeting. He wishes to meet with Eivor Wolfkist personally. Halfdan Jarl. I've heard that man's name so often, I feel as though I know him already. He is currently entangled in a war with the Picts of the Northern Hills. I suspect he wants your counsel, or your axe. If you are keen to meet him, he asks that you join him at his war camp. I have the location here. I will go at once. With caution, Eivor. Jervikshire is currently at war with the Picts, a proud clan that lives just beyond the Roman Wall. <laughs> 